This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Sign up using the link in the description to get two free months of Skillshare Premium. I, as a citizen of the Greater Terran Union, joining the ranks of its armed forces, do solemnly affirm that I will serve my country faithfully and conscientiously, and to my best ability, seek to pursue its edification and advantage, to be obedient to the law and execute the orders of the National Council and the orders of the officers appointed over me, to stand firm in guarding the rights and equality of the Terran citizen, and to defend the honor and dignity of the Terran nation. The oath of enlistment has been spoken in French, Mandarin, Bengali, and a thousand other languages, for the Greater Terran Union recognizes none above any other. It has been sworn on the pages of the Bible, Quran, every holy book, or none at all, for the Greater Terran Union affirms no faith or creed. No single culture binds the Terran state. No single species sustains the Terran name. It is a military tradition that unites the nation, one born centuries ago when all mankind was threatened with extinction. The names of fleets and armies that fought back the Tyrum have been enshrined in the nation's memory, and as the Greater Terran Union spread across the galaxy, joined by countless others. It is rare to find a citizen who cannot recite the achievements of the Second Armored, the RGR, the Mighty Second, or the Tamenskaya Division, Yet even among the greatest military units of the Union, there is one that stands above all others, the most decorated battle group in human history. VVS-989, famously known as Ryan's Raiders. It is with some level of irony, then, that VVS-989 was never intended to be a notable or even permanent fixture within Fleet Command. Its establishment occurred without ceremony, an ad hoc collection of warships rerouted from deployments in the numbered expeditionary battle groups or the Terran home fleet. The flotilla was assigned to Fort Verdun, a station on the increasingly tense border with the Algan Republic. The leading power within the alien federation known as the Compact, the Algan Republic had repeatedly attempted to seize Fort Verdun during previous conflicts, and 989 was intended to supplement its defenses. The flotilla was formed around the Passchendaele, one of the last Monte Cassino-class destroyers still in service, and supported by a half-dozen slightly more modern corvettes. Vastly under strength even by the standards of the time, the formation was deemed incapable of sustained offensive action and relegated to garrison duty and intersystem anti-piracy patrols. In 2314, following the declaration of what would become known as the Second Terran Compact War, however, 989 had gained recognition within Fleet Command after the appointment of Commodore Jim Ryan as its commanding officer. A soft-spoken man whose affability and calm was often mistaken for timidity, Ryan's ingenious use of 989's limited forces during training exercises had brought to his command an immense amount of confidence. After successfully destroying Fort Verdun in a simulated attack within Exercise Tycho Nimbus, a feat considered impossible, 989 was granted an unprecedented degree of initiative and freedom of execution at the operational and tactical level. Within the first year of the Second Terran Compact War, 989 had earned an almost legendary status amongst the fleet for its series of lightning raids across the Algan border. Acting almost completely unsupported, this small, understrength flotilla had managed to harass Algan convoys and infrastructure across multiple star systems. Repeatedly testing the limits and original intent of his orders, Commodore Ryan struck deep across the Algan border, engaging every target of opportunity while slipping away before any enemy counterattack could be mustered. On three separate occasions, the Algan Republic announced the flotilla had been destroyed, and the Passchendaele in particular became known in Terran propaganda as the Headless Horseman. On August 9, 2316, for the first time within the Terran military, VVS-989 was officially assigned the nickname used by its sailors, 
Ryan's Raiders. Following the end of the war, each ship within the 989 was awarded the Distinguished Unit Citation by the National Council. The Passchendaele presented nine campaign stars, and Jim Ryan himself earned the distinction Hero of the Greater Terran Union. In a post-war analysis of the flotilla's actions, it was concluded that the 989's raids into the Algan Republic had forced the Compact to withdraw substantial forces away from the main theater of operations. Faulty intelligence by the Algan Republic on the raiders' size and capabilities in particular compelled the Algan military into ordering an inefficient disposition of their forces and poor decision-making due to fear of an attack on their homeworld itself. The release of the novel Raiding Party, the untold story of VVS 989 in 2347, and its adaptation into the award-winning film Hellfire Across the Heavens three years later, kept the flotilla in the public consciousness. As part of a larger rearmament effort in 2378, Fleet Command announced that Ryan's raiders would be reinforced to match the size and capabilities of the numbered expeditionary fleets. This announcement coincided with a special re-release of Hellfire Across the Heavens and a recruitment effort centered around screenings of the film. No longer able to participate in the types of operations for which it had become famous, the far larger and better equipped VVS 989 of the early 25th century nevertheless cemented its reputation as Fleet Command's most capable naval force. During the numerous wars against the Compact and Volhive, Ryan's raiders served with distinction, but it was its deployment against the Tyrim that earned the battle fleet its greatest achievement. In 2448, when the Sword of Terra unleashed its destructive power on the homeworld of the Tyrim race, it was VVS 989 that had escorted it there undetected. The images of its warships, silhouetted by the burning husk of a broken world, were seen broadcast across the galaxy, one of the most enduring portrayals of Terran power. Ryan's raiders participated in every major conflict over the next two centuries. It was among the fleets assembled for the Battle of Last Light and nearly destroyed to a ship during Operation Sundial. They were the first to engage the interdimensional invaders, and the last to unleash their weapons against the portal from which these unbidden arrived. Today, VVS-989 is based on the ringworld Alwaha. Its primary mission is that of conflict deterrence, utilizing the Gateway Network to conduct prompt and sustained interstellar operations in the event of war. With the entire galaxy united under the Greater Terran Union, however, and no major conflicts in the last 75 years, the battle group's only significant deployments have been as part of goodwill tours or training exercises. While individual ships or smaller task forces might be deployed independently from the fleet for anti-piracy duties, the battle group as a whole has not unleashed its weapons in anger for the longest period in its service history. A common joke aboard its warships is that the entire force is to be sent to the Sirius system, to be anchored alongside the ancient Passchendaele as museum ships, relics of a time when the Union's survival had to be earned through blood. Whatever its fate, the veterans of Ryan's Raiders can be found in every tier of Terran citizenship and every era of Terran history. The fleet emblem of VVS-989 is displayed with honor in the homes of Terran politicians, celebrities, athletes, and those of countless Terran citizens. Most importantly, however, it can be found on the gravestones of cemeteries across a thousand Terran worlds. Unbeknownst to all but the highest tiers of citizenship, the first trials have exceeded expectations, and the first campaigns are already being drafted. Targets are being identified, and objectives are being pronounced. Soon, the order will be given, and the first banners of the Greater Terran Union to be raised in another galaxy will be carried aboard the warships of VVS-989, Ryan's Raiders. A citizen of the Greater Terran Union has a solemn duty to the human race to improve their skills for the benefit of the nation. If you'd like to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or career, the Union Ministry of Science and Education is proud to endorse Skillshare. Aside from its tremendous contributions rebuilding society in the aftermath of the Tyrim War, 
Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in subjects like design, business, and so much more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access, so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. It's also super affordable, with annual subscriptions coming to less than $10 a month. We'd recommend Introduction to Fiction, How to Write the First Draft of a Short Story by Seth Freed, and The Writer's Toolkit, Six Steps to a Successful Writing Habit by Simon Van Bui. If you aspire to serve the union in the highest tiers of citizenship, Creative Leadership Toolkit, Curiosity, History, and Discovery by John Maida, and Presentation Essentials, How to Share Ideas that Inspire Action by Simon Sinek, are two classes that will help build leadership and confidence, a necessity in any position of authority. No matter which classes you choose, you'll be joining more than 7 million creators on Skillshare. Use the link in the description to get a free two-month trial of Skillshare Premium. Citizens will also receive an additional five minutes in their daily hot water allowance, and one notice of exemption for their next period of civil service. These latter incentives only apply to citizens of the Greater Terran Union living within the Solar, Thermopylae, Aurora, Sicaria, Horizon, and Outer Rim Commissariats, and may be rescinded in the event of a national emergency.